Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. All right, you know how Black Rob just passed, right? Rest in peace to Black Rob. Mm -hmm. Condolences to his family. Yeah, he passed. Yeah, it was a video um, of him looking sick, and he was saying he had like five yeah. strokes, and, and he, he had working it out with somebody he, he, to get a house. It was bad, and everybody on yeah. the internet was like, "Why?" They got a GoFundMe for his funeral and everything. Like, he he is not he he it is not good at all. His situation is not great at all. All right, um, but yeah, so rest in peace to Black Rob. Condolences to the fam. Um, but I saw this uh, thing on Twitter, right? And uh, dude was like, man, don't be hitting me up talking about no Black Rob, Black Rob. Black Rob ain't making one song, you know? He ain't no DMX or nothing. Um, so? <laughs> how do y'all feel about that? What what are y'all takes on that? Like I this ain't got nothing to do with the show no more. Like at this point, I'm just like fuck it. I'm just gonna talk to my homies. Uh but yeah, uh so is a yeah. black man that's suffering right now, and he shouldn't be suffering, especially under the regime that he came under of like in between the time like Black Rock put Bad Boy into the two thousands with Whoa. And it's a Whoa. couple other it was a couple of other songs that came out with like shoot. Bo was big. Like I know Bo was big because my stepdad was playing Woe in the Woe remix over and over again. And and Yo, you never Woe was play rap <laughs> rap songs that much. Like like nah man, that's disrespectful. Without Woe, like, you don't get G to take this money, make yeah, this money. He I brought like him this. into the two thousands. Yeah, hell yeah, I agree. Forget what he brought into. It's all about business. People keep in these rap labels and these labels as families because that's what they try to portray but at the end of the day it's all about a piece of paper once your deal is over they ties is over unless you got some personal relationship deeper than their contract but it don't matter how sick you get when you're off that label they really don't give a fuck about you because you're not bringing no re revenue to them so why should they put any revenue out to you i know it seems harsh but at the end of the day that's the reality of the world we live in like that's just it reality reality they seen that man as a number and the signature. Once he brought them the numbers they wanted or the numbers he could bring, and signature was good enough, and the contract was done. It is. It is. It's sad to say, but at the end of the day, him working for Bad Boys just like somebody else, like me working for Walmart. When time was up, time was up. Shit, they ain't give a fuck. Yeah, that's real. But like, do you think that like like uh, Gator Girl said, nobody's fumbled a stable of stars worse than Puffy, like. That is a cursed ass record label. Like it seems like everybody that had been there is either died, went to jail, or had some type of major life struggle. Or no, no. Career after they career. signed, like if you look at even Loon, like didn't he end yeah, up getting into up. some shit? Like I'm like, even the, even the even the lady rappers and shit was, was going to jail and shit. Like it was fucking crazy. Faith ain't gonna go through shit. No, Faith was on drugs for a minute. Oh yeah. Like Making when I band. say all of them, all of them caught it. Like if you was down with that label, it's like something that happened to you. And <laughs> okay. let's not, let's, let's not. The forget. only one made it out was was Diddy. Let's let's not forget the greatest. You know what they say about him? Of all mm -hmm. times, die line, die line, and <laughs> no, nah, I'm playing. Nigga, <laughs> hell no. <nah. laughs> die line, die line. Hey. But even hey. them, like, think about them. Like, the only one that made it out of there, even somewhat already, is Eden S. Because he got the battle rap career still. But, like, That's outside of that, like, rap career. like, look at the rest look. of them. I think Chopper went to jail. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Babs, Babs, Babs Bunny. I think that's what, what was her name, Babs. Yeah, she got a, she got the, she got the league, the the, yeah. the ladies battle rap league. So she doing all right too. But like, um, it, it's but notice what you. It's rough. Battle rap outside of them, like, and and that's too low level. So they won't really there that long. They was you know come in with mm -hmm. the with the band real quick, you know. But battle rap, that's and they get like, up out of there. That's like a whole nother career outside. Like if you really look at battle rap compared to a normal rap career, that's like a whole nother career outside of that. So that, that luckily they had that to 
they, they'll fall back on. But uh, what a lot of rappers from the 90s and up, what they go through is they come out of the streets and they think it's that family, we got your back mentality or whatever. But Puffy, Puffy is an executive. Like, he, the, the things that he has to put across or whatever and the contracts he has to sign is still in a corporate America mindset or whatever. And these, these guys come in not thinking that way. Or whatever they just think that yeah puffy he you know what I'm saying he fam he got my back or whatever and puffy still got to do his corporate business to keep himself afloat because evidently you know him and record labels is just up and down up and down up and down especially since either they dying they overdosing they going to jail or their careers is just gone pretty much like my question is all right all right so, like, uh, Darnell even said, like, Mace, like, even he had some type of mental struggle. Like, do you think the record labels, because at the end of the day, even though it's a new day for, like, music, record labels have figured out the, the whole system, and they still, like, if you don't have a record label pushing you and getting your shit played on, like, Rap Caviar and, you know what I'm saying, the bigger playlist on these... uh streaming services, you still not going to be a shit. So, like, with them being still a necessary evil in the game, like, do you think they have any type of, like, uh, what you call it, like, responsibility for, like, well, dealing with their artists? Like, I, I guess for me, like, at some point, ethics will have to kick in. Like, and I know that it is just business, Dominique. You right, you right. But like for me, like I don't know, man. Like, let let look at who you trying to get ethics from, the music industry, which is a yeah. Service. But I'm like a lot of these dudes. We talking about like I'm talking about people like a Dame Dash, like a Puffet, like a like you came from the bullshit. What that mean? It's business. Oh no, I guess for me, man. It's doggy. I guess it's just the way I look at it. It's doggy dog at the end of the day when you playing with millions and millions or even a couple hundred thousand. It's doggy dog. Like like I said, they are a commodity. When you're an artist, you're you're a commodity and you're selling your art and a part of yourself to try to attain a certain amount of fame or a certain amount of money. Once they've drained that that and drained the possibility of you making that. They have no loyalty to you. The loyalty only comes with the money. That's when, that's why we see most people game and try to start their own shit. You feel me? So they can get from under the umbrella so they can build their own. So then, if it happens to them, of course the people will care. Of course people will rally behind you because you're the source. You 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 are the one who's holding everybody else up. So if you fall, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be fucked up. So like for say for instance, DMX. DMX was an umbrella for a lot of people. You feel me? So when DMX failed, it hurt a lot of people. But who was Black Rob the umbrella for? Nobody. He was a basic. He was a basic. That's big. Commodity. He was a basic commodity. Yeah. He, was, he was like a banana. There's so many bananas. You know I mean? Then, then he, it's like, go ahead. He was that one banana you pick off. He was that one banana you pick off and leave behind because you only wanted four. You didn't want five, so you just left him behind. So. It is what it is. It's business. I mean, mm -hmm. in business, when it comes to business, ethics and morals, you got to throw that out the window when you get to a certain level of business because it's all about numbers and money. It's sad to say, but the, those who make the most money in the world have the worst ethics and worst morals because it ain't about people no more. You can't be human. I got It's all about my money. So if you're not bringing in that revenue for me, I got to look past you or look to somebody else who is, regardless of what, how much I may like you. You what connection we have? It's it's about that dollar because you want to continue continuous mission to make more and more money. And if they can't make the money off you, I'm, oh well, I'm not gonna put no money into you. That, is that I, what's holding us back? I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's holding us back because I mean it's not just a black thing; it's a it's a business thing. That's that's it's the, an industry. That's that's the American thing. It's corporate. I mean, we're, we're we're the not even. Corporate America. That's this is a, that's America. We're a capitalist society. We capitalize on everything. So, by say for instance, okay, okay, you got a young man from the streets who has a talent who wants to better himself off making music. A record label signs him. 
they're not signing him to, to make him better. They're signing them to see that because they can capitalize off of him and make more money. He's getting with them because he can capitalize off signing that deal to, to boost himself up to get more money to open up other windows. So in all situations, we're all capitalizing off each other, especially in business. That's what we were based off of. That's the core of America, balancing, balancing business and capitalizing in that situation. And even in business, something is valid. Sad, like I said, sad, sad to say, but the morals and ethics we teach and preach on on, the, on a everyday level to each other and our kids, if we really want them to make money and, and, and be the tycoons and be the, the millionaires of the next generation, some of those we shouldn't teach. But those people we don't want on everyday levels. We don't want those people walking around. We don't want people with low ethics and morals walking around. We want people with high ethics and high moral character. Um, caliber walking around, but most billionaires aren't like that. Most billionaires are cold, callous people. Because if you, if I'm a big billionaire and I know I can shut, I need to shut down this factory over here. If I shut down this factory, I can make another billion dollars from revenue. But if I shut down this factory, I'm losing a hundred. I'm, I'm, I'm costing seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Um, well, excuse me, seven hundred fifty thousand people their jobs. Am I care about people losing their job, or I'm care about this possible another million I can make by shutting them down? I'm care about that million, not them jobs. That's just it. That's real. And I, um, like, you know, I, I used to rap and stuff, so I used to, like, really get in the music industry and and record labels and how they set up contracts. Even when I went down to Atlanta and went to that, um, went to AI or whatever, I had took a whole music business class or whatever, how they do the deals and the 360 deals that they have. You got to think that this music industry been around forever. This the the fucked up things that happen to these artists is is pretty much um, how they run businesses. Like you seen the movies like Cadillac Records and how they deal off or the Temptations. Every time you have like a music related, um, like a documentary or a music related movie or whatever, you always see them at the end slumped off to the side or they drugged up or they broke or, you know, that's because the music industry has a, like a pimp mentality. Like I'm going to make, I'm going to dress you up. I'm going to make you look good or whatever, but I'm not going to give you no money. You know what I'm saying? And like Puffy, I can't even like, we can say these things about Puffy or whatever. Cause that's, I mean, that's what we saw, but him going up in the music industry or whatever, He's basically was doing what he was taught from other people that was doing it to him, pretty much. And majority of these executives, especially yeah, black like Gator Girl said, he was uh, yeah, he learned from Andre Harrell and them. Mm hmm. And yeah. and and then it's just that music, like the black people that's in that industry, the music industry, just learn from the people that was before them or whatever. And they're all, you know. None of it has anything to do with it. It's all about the the show and how much money I can make off this particular act, pretty much. Now, nowadays, I see a lot more people um, seeing the faults and how they went wrong in the music industry earlier. And they're making their dues and they're trying to rectify maybe the things that they did in the music industry to get where they're at. Like Puffy, like he even reached out to even, you know, you know, get Black Robber home and, and do things like that, like from what I was saying. But, you know, sometimes it's a little too late. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, mm-hmm. like if you ain't heard from nobody from a while, you're not even trying to keep up with them. You know what I'm saying? And this, that, and the third. Like, you got to think Black Rob came out. I feel like Black Rob was at the, the tail end of the whole bad boy family situation where when they first started off, it probably was a family because that's it was just Biggie, Lil Kim, and Biggie's crew all hooked in, and mm-hmm. that was Puffy's mm-hmm. main act. I I rely on this main act. I'm going to do everything for this main act. But once you get to a certain level and or, or whatever, and you done achieved this many things, and you're stuck in the business, and now you're just running a business, everybody after you in your business is just another act. And he's probably going at it. He's just going through the protocol of being in the music industry. So I can't even really fault him on that, but I can fault him. I can fault the music industry culture and how they treat artists or whatever. And that's real. They go, 
they're gonna have to adjust that because now in the age of of streaming or whatever all you have to do is just build up your buzz locally all you have to do as an artist is build up your buzz not even build up your buzz locally you can have a buzz and a fan base off the internet you know what i'm saying like i've seen artists have more fan base overseas than they do in the states you know what i'm saying how so, many how many artists are you really seeing though that's blowing up organically as opposed to having secret industry pushes behind them i'll i'll put it this way i will see because i'm not see seeing it. a lot of these grassroots people that's really grassroots because then when these people come out then you find out oh well this record label yeah. been pushing them from the jump or this you know what i mean so like i, would, I don't know I would say i would say it's always how i put it um it's more it's more of a racial of grassroots is coming out right now than it would be back then. Like your I favorite you done, artist, yeah. Toby, like, like he might have somebody pushing him, but I could tell through his message the and plants. stuff like yep. that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of industry plants out there. But like like yeah. I said, it's a more it's more of a ratio of people coming right out of their own homes and coming out and creating the buzz through the internet and then getting that um that visual from the industry you know what i'm saying like once yeah but that's what that i'm saying level. but that's what but i'm saying as, like as, you're not as, chosen by the people though which is the biggest problem. The like, problem like like so like, you got so uh, uh like, so yeah uh you got Darnell. she was saying that the wish she wished the women artists get smarter and stop always talking about sex and then you got the industry push with the plants are annoying. Like both of those things are a result of the same same catalyst, I think, though. Like it all comes from the music industry is still ran by the labels. Like when you think about, say you got 20 people, right? They all organically in their little hometown, they are rocking the open mic circuit they are killing it people love them there the what the only thing that separates them 19 that stay there and that one that you then hear on the radio or that one that you hear on spotify or that one that come across your random feed on youtube or whatever else is the uh the actual record label that's behind it uh, like ray right you remember when Face brought them to us randomly like months ago, uh, right? All right. You got to know that he was planted then by the industry. So he was popping up on a bunch of people's shit randomly. Uh -huh. As opposed to the dude that's local, that's got a killer following at home, but outside of West Bubblefuck, whatever, you'll never hear of. Just because the yeah. industry didn't pick up on them. Oh, and Donnell, the plant is basically uh, the industry will take somebody and they'll act like they're organically like coming about and they'll act like this person is an independent and they're organically just got this grassroots following or everybody liking them, but really it's them pushing it on people and marketing them with their marketing dollars. Yeah. Like, kind of like Kind of like um, Lil Nas X. Like Cardi B, Lil Nas X, maybe. Uh, the the perfect the perfect example of it. Even though I love this dude, I actually like his music. Um, what's his name? Uh, Chance, Chance the rapper. Oh, I was gonna bring him up. Yeah, Chance. He that's like the perfect he's, he's example of an he, industry plant. Like he was came out like he's independent, but really he had a record label behind him, kind of like helping to grease the skids the whole time. You know what I mean? Time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, see, get a girl, grease with me, Lil Nas X. Everybody yes, thought that, yes, um, yes, yeah. That old time world exactly. was a uh, exactly. um, was just an organically. Everybody in the um, <laughs> on the internet just like. Man, that. I like that song until the the uh, what was that? I don't know which episode that was. A couple episodes ago, when you. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. Damn, man. That's an industry play that fucked me up right there. I wasn't ready for that. Busting it open for the real devil. But uh-uh. see, this is the thing. I knew he was going <laughs> to end up doing doing some stuff like that because if you look at like like um his twitter or whatever now it's not like i follow him on twitter i just see like videos or whatever where they say he's trolling and stuff like that or whatever the way he trolls the way he um just make videos and stuff like that you could tell you know that he's just going to do whatever he can to like excite controversy or whatever like yeah, like but my thing is this man like old time role and then he just bust out and said, Hey, I'm I'm also gay or whatever, just to like it almost I don't care like about the just gay. trying to ride the wave. It's not it's not that, it's that it feels like he's trying to ride the wave of of that community. Okay, I'm with you. Yo, that's what I don't like. That's yeah. that's that's all I'm saying. Like I don't I don't like the riding the wave of of all of it, like just be who the hell you are. Like it ain't that deep, man. Like nobody gives a fuck. But but the but the purposely trying to make people piss, then acting shocked when they get pissed. Like you, that was the purpose of the trolling, right? You wanted people to get pissed. So now that they're pissed, eat that shit. Don't don't try to come out with the PR stunts and the bullshit. Like eat that shit. He got a lot of money behind him. His budgets for his movies and performances for them mediocre songs, pure plan. Oh yes. Oh yeah, straight uh-huh. up, straight like, up. Like I to this day don't. Gardenias. What was the whole contract? Oh, the controversy was that he made Old Town Road, but it wasn't considered a country music song, even though it has all yes. the music, the elements, aspects, the elements. And elements of a country. And then Billy Ray Cyrus song. got on it, and they oh, and they rock with it. Mm-hmm. And I, and you know, I liked it. Like, go ahead, go against the system and stuff like that. The Billy Ray Cyrus yeah. version was hard, though, man. I ain't gonna front, man. I was rocking with that song, man. Billy Ray Cyrus was going hard on that shit. I, I was I'll in there. Hat down, up, and I'm living like a rock star. I'm, I'm my shit. <laughs> the reason why I can't, um, I got that black PTSD in me where I start listening to That's country real. music and I just get paranoid. Like, <laughs> I, somebody in here don't like me. Like, it's not necessarily yeah. like that, but I just have this feeling. All right, they're gonna keep playing this country music sooner or later. Yeah, or whatever, somebody is gonna. It's <laughs> gonna be somebody that's popping up that don't hey, like my face. Donnell, I'm sorry, man. Damn, head down, huh? Man, that shit rock. <laughs> Yeah, what's up being the car? Uh, 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 living like a rock star. What? But a, oh man, that's my shit. But a lot of times it's it's the artist too. It, it sometimes oh, it's like, God. <laughs> like with the um with your ground with the grassroots artists or whatever, sometimes they may mm-hmm. have the message and everything around it, but they might not have the networking skill or the you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of um a lot of artists that have a message are also introverts. So they might not have that go get it to just go and talk to any old person out there that might be promoting or the person that may push them in the area or whatever. Uh, I'm not saying that that's for every artist, but that's just some of the things that I've seen, you know, going out there too. In my own experience, like, like looking into the industry and how it is and realizing it's not really about the music and the artistry itself is really about making money off of it and advertisement. It, it kind of like it put a little bad taste in my mouth when it comes to music, well, music industry, right. not music or whatever. So a lot of times, them grassroots um, artists that may have a, a good following and a good uh, message to it, they may get into it. The opportunity to actually get into the industry when they look at it and they look at the paper, they they're not gonna agree with it because they have conscious mind. Most of them, mm-hmm. most of them contracts that get to they're not coming up there getting giving the artists what they want, their masters, their publishing, and royalties. The whole point of the industry is to own masters, publishing, and royalties. <laughs> pretty much. So, yeah. uh, of course, yeah. they're not going to yeah. give it to the artist. That's something you negotiate between it. We got that. 
we got the platform and the infrastructure to put your music out there to the world. You got the music that we can push out to the world. But you gonna have to go through these stipulations because we're still a business and we still gotta make money off people or whatever. Yeah. Joe Button um brought the- up something too uh, about the uh, industry putting together a union for artists and like like insurance for so for situations like Black Rob and stuff like right. that. Right. But like I said, the only reason I already have that is because it's a it's a pimp industry, just like Hollywood. All right, I'm gonna stop running now. No, you was you was preaching. <laughs> yeah, like Break that's some real shit. Union. Need to be a rapper's union. It should be, or something like that, like some type of like it has that like now that is an industry that is. As says that like so many people do it, it's enough people like they need to go ahead and find some kind of way though to like get them some fair treatment. Like, cause I feel like the music industry in general is fucked up, but I feel like especially in the rap industry, like artists get fucked over. I, I um I put some and they be thinking that they balling and then be broke as fuck out of nowhere. Yeah. Permanent yeah. hair like young jock. One thing um, Steve Stout is doing, um, he got this. I got to look more into it. It's something. Uh, it's something about uh, owning your masters a lot right. more. But they do I not like, pay. Yeah, I I like I like his ideas about it because it gives Hello. more control to the artist. It's like, um, like the artists get more control of their masters, more control of the publishing. It's something Steve Stout is. He got a company doing that where they can uh, not only you get more control as an artist, but you also get um, you get your music played on different streaming sites that like uh, TuneCore, SoundCloud, you know, all the ones that they have negotiated with. So it is people out there that's been in the industry that seem like they're getting toward that point where they have uh, artists having more control pretty much. Do you think that? That's why Drake and Minaj signed so late. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think with them too, I think with them, they already knew that they were going to be signing somewhere and Young Money just happened to be the landing spot because Lil Wayne was the hardest artist at the time. Like, Whoever had the hardest artists at the time was going to get Nicki Minaj and Drake because they were already being pushed by other industry factions before they actually uh, signed anywhere. So like they was already getting pushed on their like mixtapes and stuff. Like they already had an industry push behind them. So like they were going to sign a major deal with somebody. It was just a matter of where they went, and Lil Wayne just happened to have the relationships to do that, but. I don't know that it was a direct correlation. It was more just, yeah, they was, but I do think they were plants. Yes, like, yeah, I would consider Drake, them plants. Drake, like, a, a lot of artists a are plants. TV yeah. star. And I don't say Drake that in a was, bad way. It's just that's what they are. Drake is a TV star before all of this. Mm-hmm. He was on that show, Degrassi. Like, uh, yeah. I wheelchair my Jimmy. Brother, my brother, <laughs> um, he grew up watching that show. Like, he's like ten <laughs> years younger. Oh, and. Happy birthday to my brother. His birthday was on the... Uh, my brother... Happy Eric, birthday, Eric, twins. Birthday. Happy birthday, on the, twins. On the... Um, King Friday, and Queens. The Happy 16th. birthday, twins. But, yeah, he um he was the only reason why I knew about Drake. Because he grew up watching Degrassi when he was in high school. And then, after a while, they start, hey, have you heard about this guy, Drake? Whatever. It was like, I was like, all right, this guy, cool. Gator Girl was saying it's crazy because hip hop moguls came into the game independent and then they were so ahead of the game, but then they got infiltrated. Yeah, like that's my thing. Like it, it's, it's, it's happy all oh, birthday, Pat brother, too. But yeah, even like, even if you look at like people like Master P, like anybody, like mm-hmm. I feel like we get on, we get popping. And then as soon as it comes time to like, all right, we get we get in a position where we could change something. It's like we fall into the well. I don't want to jeopardize my spot. Uh, like at that point, I know I can get to that spot. So fuck the spot. Like let's go ahead and blow this shit down. Like 
Is Come on, everybody. That, <laughs> like, is it that? Or is it that those people in those positions have seen the the consequences or, or the outcome of the other people who've been in their position who have reached their hand out and attempted to help those, help others, and it ended up bad? So now they're in a position they don't want to go down the same road. It could be fear, it could be fear of uh, shit. If I help and I do the same thing, old boy did so in his time, I may end up in the same position and lose all my stuff too. But it could be like you know what? If this, I don't know if they're willing to work as hard as I'm willing to work because uh, they know that's how real. Where you get to that position? So I don't know if it's always as them told a cold shoulder. They can see it. From a different perspective in their position now, because I mean, they know how much it took, how much sacrifices they're willing to make to get to the position. So they they, they willing to reach their hand out, and the person they reaching their hand out to the help is not willing to make the same sacrifices. You know, is it worth the risk? I got That's a real. perspective. I got a perspective on that because with the, with the music industry, you kind of got to look at the day and age they were brought up in compared to the day and age we brought up now. See, now everybody's asking these questions now because now we're so high up in technology and information can get, um, we can look up information at a point in the click or whatever, yeah. not even a point of click, just talk on the phone. Hey Siri, what's the cure for polio or something like that and we can find <laughs> that, like, yeah. or whatever. They yeah. did not have that back then, they didn't. And then you, you think about it, these people, they're making music out of uh, and selling it out the back of their trunk or whatever. There's a reason why they were selling it out the back of the trunk because they didn't have the outlet or whatever to bring it out there worldwide. They had to build on that until they got a buzz and then somebody came along with that, with that there. If there was, if we'd had the technology that we have now back then or whatever, then we probably yeah. wouldn't be worried about Baby being signed with Universal or Master P, Master, just that and third. No Limit would probably still be around as a as a, a a Universal other than being split with another big name, you know, company or whatever. Like, we're in that period now. So, like, when you got That's these, these up-and-coming um, entrepreneurs in the um, record company or whatever, they're learning, you know, as they go. Like, these people were in there, like, when they're in their 20s. They're learning as they go. They're going into the industry as interns, basically. Like, gotcha. straight up intern. Um, like, I started in the 90s, and he was um, he was 21 years old when he started. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They were still young people still learning that stuff. So, like, it's not that they don't get to a point. It's just that now we're... Uh, actually, at a point where we can we can um, take uh, advantage of these opportunities. Now we don't have to go to a label because at a point in time, that's the only way. Think about this now: we got a YouTube channel, we got content, we got episodes, or whatever. We this we didn't think we could ever do that, but this is true. It, oh, we're we're able to do that now because the internet. Whether we hate technology or not, you know, technology is awesome when it works, as we know, as we can tell today, or whatever. Oh, but my God. We, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Fuck technology. Technology is but stupid. At the same time, it's a gift and a curse because, like, the only way we would have been able to do this without Internet and the technology <laughs> or, or whatever is through <laughs> a major company, pretty much. Like, that's the only way we would be able to have, like, a show. Until internet came along, pretty much. So it, right. it wasn't. It wasn't that they didn't. I'm pretty sure they would look at these contracts and be like, "I really don't want to give fifty percent of everything I own." You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if they had more power and more information back then, then we probably wouldn't have so many rappers and artists now. You know what I'm saying? Like, at, at the end of the day, still, you know, why like white supremacy and the economy and the way that things the way the things are in society rules all the industries in society so 
the the people that were coming. <laughs> I didn't start that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I didn't. St- I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know what you mean. I didn't start anything. I didn't <laughs> say nothing. I didn't say nothing. But all right, basically, I'm saying like it's. I feel like it's, <laughs> if we had if we had the opportunities we have now back then, then a lot more people would be better off now. Pretty much. No, but that's the, real. But at the same time, it might be even harder for the people that's making their way out now to get out there like we are now if it started back then because then no i'll tell thinking, you what it was yeah. it's like everything got that learning curve like that's yep, all right exactly if, you, if, if you look at a life of crime right some new shit will come out the criminals will finally pick up to it by the time they all pick up to it they got a window where they can capitalize on it before the cops pick up to it and then they got to mm. move on to the next thing and it's like a constant cat and mouse thing if you look at any type of capitalist industry, one one group will start off and they will have the upper hand, and then all of a sudden it's a window, and they gotta capitalize on the doing that window. Like when the music That's industry crazy. first started, I'm sure it was a spot where like artists were still like making their own money from touring and all that shit, and they were getting bigger money than the record labels at points. Like that's how you had people out there who could end up buying their own record label. You know what I mean? Back in the day. Mm-hmm. But then the record labels caught up. Then you had the record labels just running shit for a while. And then technology switched over. And for a while, you had people like Soldier Boy and others that was like able to capitalize on that little bit of in-between time between like when the internet first broke and you were able to use it mm-hmm. and the record labels catching up and figuring out how to get money off of it. The pre-sound time. At this point, the record labels are caught up. Like if you look at, when you look at even like maybe five years ago, right? Five years ago, you could take a person on SoundCloud, they could sit there and put all their records on there, blow up on SoundCloud and then take that to a record label and then they get up, they get put on. But they got, they coming with 250,000, 500,000 followers coming with them. What you're seeing now is SoundCloud is no longer even really a thing anymore because the record labels that came in and busted them out and made it so that Spotify, Apple, and Tidal is pretty much the only way you're going to get put on, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got certain playlists on these these, uh, streaming apps where, like, if you're on these playlists, you're almost guaranteed to at least get a chance to go into the billboard. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it like, if you take somebody like, um, oh man, um, okay, you take a soldier boy, right? Mm-hmm. He was this great dude. He found his. He was smart enough to understand. Okay, the internet ain't figured this shit out yet. I I done seen how to make money from this. Let me get my money on early before this shit catch up. Record labels catch up. Now you get an NBA young boy. Yeah, NBA Youngboy does have a lot of people that like him. But a lot of that comes from the push that industry people give him as opposed to him just getting that organically and then coming to a label or coming to a situation with that following already. Like his following comes out of no like his when your second or third song is like out of here out of here these days yeah that's it's no longer that being organic like because a real song like that that's gonna go by word of mouth that's gonna be just like any other organic following of anything it's gonna start small it ain't gonna be like oh today i put this out tomorrow it got five hundred thousand views no it's gonna be like oh well this got a, this many plays here like 25 this week, and then, oh, now it's at 500 all of a sudden. Oh, now it's at 1,000. Oh, you know, it's going to be a gradual buildup. These people is getting this shit like boom, boom, and that's industry plant shit. That's what I'm talking about. It's it's always going to be a uh, period of time where it's going to be like the industry got to keep up with what um, the audience is basically doing. Oh, the next piece is about to come. 
Uh-huh. The next piece is about to come. When you see the money shit start to change, usually after that, everything change. And then you got shit like whatever that uh coin coin base, whatever that mm-hmm. shit they got. Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. No, coin base is whatever that shit is. Whatever oh, that like, company that is, it just got mad people rich as fuck. Ain't that Nas nice shit? Nas nice, uh, NBA um, Young Boy. Uh, uh, NBA young boy, he's a young thug. Uh, God bless me for calling somebody else a young thug because I damn sure was doing the same shit he was doing at his age. But he's um he's out there. Yeah, he do got fifty eleven kids. He do got fifty eleven kids. You know him. Yeah. You don't got, you don't got fifty eleven kids, and you don't got diseases. So, yeah. Hey, God bless him. God bless. Him. He got the herbs too. He throw yeah. it out ush bucks. He throw it out the ush yeah. bucks. Yeah. He throw it out the ush bucks. Hey, Say that joke out there. These are confessions. Them burn dollars make you holler. Oh, Literally, they, they said Usher uh, did throw out some money, man. But no, I yeah, they did say that. But I don't give a damn. Nigga, still funny. You knew you what should. people was gonna say. You knew what people was gonna say. Not, you're not. Yeah, it's gonna be one girl that's gonna have too much. Too. Too much. Usher you supposed to get out in front of that story and have a story ready. You mm-hmm. out here throwing out the Ush Bucks. Yes, the Ush Bucks. That's what he giving them, them ladies. He giving yeah. them the Ush Bucks, Gator girl. He giving them the Ush Bucks girl. Yeah. Giving them the Ush Bucks. Giving them the Ush Bucks. Giving them the Ush Bucks. And it sounds like NBA Young Boy giving them the Ush Bucks too. I didn't know both of them had that thing. 